Um, and so what we want now is to, to sort of move on a little bit and to think about um, how we develop the capacity of the whole team. We know that engaging and belonging is, is really important to everybody, to students. Um, and we know some stuff about belonging, but much of this then falls onto the academic staff community and the wider staff community to really facilitate that sort of engagement and belonging. And, and we found in our previous research that, that student belonging comes from engagement with peers. And you heard our students there talking about those challenges of, of, and the isolation and, and the sort of the steps that we that Neil and Mariana put in place at, at Porto to try and meet up with each other. Um, it also comes from interaction with staff. And yet that's quite hard to do when there seems to be a sort of a, a power hierarchy or difference. And it's, it's much easier to do it informally in the corridor and much harder to do it if you have to do it through, through some sort of online mechanism. Um, also around developing the skills to be a successful learner. And suddenly the, the whole game changed, the skills you needed changed overnight or at least some of them changed and and, and we also found that the, the curriculum needed to be really relevant to current interests and future aspirations and as with our student teachers some of that became challenging the sense that would they be able to achieve their longer term goals we also found in some work that we did between 2012 and 2017 that many non-traditional students had lower rates of engagement and lower rates of belonging we found that was particularly true for um, students who, who lived at home, who didn't have a quiet place to study, who traveled to study, and for, for black and minority ethnic students. Um, so, so what we've been trying to do within this is, is to, in the, uh, what, sorry, in the I Belong project, is to develop a conversation about diversity, belonging, and success but also to work with our course teams and the whole team, not just one or two champions or advocates in a particular program, um, and to really grapple with some of those kind of challenging issues, some of the issues that our students have just been talking about. So what we want to do in, in the rest of the time we've got today is to share with you some of the activities around promoting team teacher reflection and developing the capacity of the team to really kind of promote and sustain it. So what we're hoping is that we can move from a, um, a project, so it's a, the I Belong is a project, into something which is much more changing the culture and embedded into the structure and culture of, of our higher education institutions. So the first activity that, that we want to do, although I've now got 20 notifications on my phone, so hopefully that means it's not a problem. No. Uh, the first, the first activity we want to do this afternoon is, is, to, is to go back to, to some work to be facilitated by Cravini. And she's going to talk through and demonstrate the online power walk. And we use the online power walk with colleagues at Edge Hill and in different partner institutions, initially in, in a, an in-person kind of setting. And then um, we were the guinea pigs at Edge Hill, how we might change it into an online context. And um, so, so we use the Power Walk as a way to really help people understand differences and discrimination and the different power that different students and different staff sometimes experience. So I probably haven't done justice in the introduction there, but I'm now going to invite Pravini and some other volunteers. Everyone's been volunteered, although I think some of them had their arms twisted for all of these activities today. So I'm going to invite Pravini and, and other colleagues to, to um, demonstrate the online power walk to you. So I'm going to stop broadcast. Uh, they will be joining in uh, in a minute. Okay, so so Pravini and other colleagues will be joining in a minute. I've now got twenty three notifications on here, and they're all saying the message is the same. What a wonderful job the student panel did! So thank you so much for sharing your insights. It's amazing how many commonalities there are across the different uh, the different institutions and countries and contexts. Uh, 
and lots of claps coming on the phone as well as on, on the screen here, so thank you. We we'll just wait for Pravini to and others who are joining this group to to come in. I I think I thought it wouldn't be quite so difficult to run an online conference compared to perhaps to an in-person conference, but I think probably it's harder because you can't you can't sort of hurry people along and and make sure they're in the right room in quite the same way. But I have to say that Ivana and Tara and other colleagues at KIC have done a brilliant job today helping us to connect together. Ah, I can see, I can see more of you now. Welcome, Pravini. I've already introduced the idea, so um, but probably I haven't done it justice at all. So I'm going to hand over to you and to the various colleagues that are sitting around this table, so to speak, to demonstrate the online power walk and to talk through the implications. So thank you very much for rejoining us. Thank you again, Liz, for the introduction. Uh, indeed, we're going to do the power walk and we have some volunteers um, in this uh, room uh, to share uh, their reflections. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen so you can see uh, what we're going to do. And I just want to make sure again that you can see my um, slides. I believe you can. Um, so what we're going to do just to set the stage is we're going to do an exercise that encourages us to step into someone else's shoes. And I have a couple of um, uh, volunteers or we have a couple of volunteers uh, with us. Um, Sean, uh, Farina, Nadia, Amina and Alexandra, I believe. And uh, they are going to uh, share their reflections uh, on this exercise. And I invite all of you who are watching to also um, join us in this exercise and step into someone else's shoes. I'll explain how it goes. Um, I'm going to ask you to come up with an identity um, that is uh, for this exercise that is different from your own. Um, and to form this identity, I'm going to offer you some dimensions that you can think of. Um, and I'm going to ask you to uh, pick at least two identity markers that are different from your own identity. So in terms of gender, you can uh, form an identity that is different from your own. So to take my own uh, example, I identify as female. So for this particular exercise, I could choose to um, step into uh, a man's shoes. So my gender would be male, but you can also choose non-binary or other uh, whatever you think is different from your own. Um, another identity marker you can think of is ethnicity. Um, and um, in terms of ethnicity, I would identify as Asian. Um, so I could choose to step into um, a, a person who identifies as black or white or other. So again, you can choose for yourself. Um, Another um, identity marker you can think of is sexuality, um, heterosexual, gay, bisexual, or again, other. Um, so you can, uh, again, decide for yourself what, which is different from yours. And uh, another identity marker you can think of is, for instance, academic background. Um, if you have um, experience in higher education, you can choose for this particular exercise uh, to step into someone's shoes who doesn't have any family experience in higher education or no recent experience or perhaps alternative entry uh, uh, qualification. So these are some examples that you can think of for this particular exercise. Um, and again, uh, you can keep some of your identity markers, but choose at least two that are different from your own. Um, I understand I uh, missed uh, one volunteer, Sarah. I'm so sorry, Sarah. I'm so glad you're joining us today as well. So just to make sure, um, and James, <laughs> apologies. So just to make sure that we have everyone, Sean, Nadia, Alexandra, Sarah, Farina, and James. Um, so you are going to uh, share your reflections with us. And what we're going to do, um, if you have your uh, identity formed, I'll give you a moment uh, to maybe if you want to write it down 
so you can uh, keep it in mind. Um, and I'm going to present to you 10 statements. Um, and I'm going to ask to you to reflect on those statements from this identity that you have now created. Um, and um, from this particular perspective, you're going to think about this statement to what extent you agree or disagree. And depending on your answer, you can sign yourself with uh, scores. Um, and it's all in the slides, uh, how many score, how many points you get. Um, and by the end of the exercise, we have 10 statements. You can calculate your total score. And depending on your total score, um, we'll engage in a conversation on, you know, who has a high score and a low score and what that means and why you came to that uh, particular amount. So just to make sure that um, everything is clear, I'm going to check um, with my volunteers or our volunteers. Is everything clear or do you have any questions? No questions. Hi, do, hi sorry. Do we um, answer the questions from ourselves or from our alternative identity? From your alternative identity. Okay, thank yes. you. And you don't have to um, share your scores yet with me. So during the exercise, you can just keep your answers to yourself. Just make sure that you keep the score. And then by the end of the exercise, you can share your score in the chat. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions? No questions. All right. Then I'm going to proceed with the first statement. And the first statement is, I can ask my parents for help in navigating the university. If you disagree with this statement from your alternative identity, you get zero points. If you're not sure how to answer this question or you partially agree, you can uh, note five points. And if you agree, you can note 10 points. So also for those of you who are watching, you can join uh, this exercise and participate and write down um, uh, how you would answer this uh, statement from an alternative identity. So I'll continue with the next statement. And the next statement is, I recognize the history of my ancestors in my curriculum. I recognize the history of my ancestors in my curriculum. So same exercise here. If you disagree, zero points. If you're in doubt or you partially agree, five points. And if you agree, you can note 10 points. I'm going to move to the next statement and please to our volunteers, if I move too fast, let me know. Next statement. My voice and experiences are represented in the student bodies of the university. My voice and experiences are represented in the student bodies of the university. So again, zero points if you disagree, five points if you partially agree or you're not sure, and 10 points if you agree from your alternative identity. All right, moving on to the fourth statement. I recognize myself in the teaching staff. I recognize myself in the teaching staff. And I forgot to mention, but I hope that you Join this exercise from your own context. So think about your own institution and what that's like in someone else's shoes. Then we'll move to statement five, halfway there. <laughs> I can participate in my classes without encountering any challenges. I can participate in my classes without encountering any challenges.
All right, moving on to the next statement. I see myself reflected in communication materials published by the university. I see myself reflected in communication materials published by the university. Zero points if you disagree with the statement, five points if you doubt or partially agree, 10 points if you agree. Moving on to the next one. I am seldom confronted with stereotypes about my community. I am seldom confronted with stereotypes about my community. And I can imagine the big question is, what is my community? <laughs> but hopefully we'll explore that in your reflections after this exercise. Then we'll move on to the next statement. If I address something I consider inappropriate, I'm not worried people would think I'm oversensitive. If I address something I consider inappropriate, I'm not worried. People will think I'm oversensitive. All right. Moving on to the next one. We're almost there. I know where to go within the university if I need support. I know where to go within the university if I need support. Zero points if you disagree, five points if you doubt or partially agree, and 10 points if you agree. So we're finally there. The last statement for today, for this particular exercise. My experience at the university is empowering and has strengthened my confidence. My experience at the university is empowering and has strengthened my confidence. So these are the 10 statements. And um, I'll give you a moment, both our volunteers and you watching, if you have joined this exercise, to calculate your total score. And if you have calculated your total score, you can share them with me in the chat. If that's possible in this setup. <laughs> I think it is. There you go. I already have some. So um, for those of you watching, I'm getting some scores and it's interesting uh, to see. I'm uh, aware that uh, the audience can't see them, so I will uh, mention them. Um, and I will just invite you, depending on, on your score, uh, to share some uh, reflections. Um, and I see that, um, Amina, you have 35. So can I ask you um, to first uh, share how you experienced this exercise? So like the role that I took or? Yes. Well, okay. maybe, no, let, let's start with um, um, uh, indeed the, the role that you took and then how you felt uh, during this. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I, I in my head, I mixed it up with my own role, mixed up with uh, what I thought of. And the role I thought of was a black male person. Um, myself, I'm, I'm a Muslim and I'm, my parents are refugees. So I took that also with it. And um, yeah, 
I had a, I don't know the statements out of my head anymore. So I don't know if you can go. If like, there's a particular statement that uh, comes to mind, I can um, um, uh, scroll back. Maybe the, um, I think it was the second or the third. I'm not sure. Like, or the, um, yeah. I, I the topic? Just, yeah, it was like, it was more like, I don't see a lot of um, diversity at like the, the representation of the school mm -hmm. and like um, the study that I do, like I think of the 80 people, like 75 are white and not Muslim, they're like Dutch white. And um, there has been like in the first year we had an interaction with a, with a teacher and all of our teachers, like I've never seen a teacher that's not Dutch in our, like the classes that I take. The tutors they are, but like the, the teachers actually like teaching the, uh, the the classes, I didn't see that. And like we had an interaction once um, in the first year and we had a teacher from America and he was like a Trump supporter and stuff like that. And it was like one black, black uh, male uh, student and he forwarded a question to him and he asked him like, what was your worst um, topic or what was your worst subject when you were in high school? And then he made like a joke. He said like, it must be Dutch. And he started laughing. And like everybody in the classroom was like, it was like a hundred people in the, in, the, in the room and everybody was like quiet and like awkward. And yeah, those kind of things in my eyes, it's not okay to have it like in a university. Um, but like I see during the classes, like in my like pedagogical science, what I study, I see that there's more like attention to towards like Muslim people, Moroccan, Turkish people, because we are very multicultural. So we have to study and learn about more cultures than just the Dutch one. So that's actually a positive thing, but like overall the university, it's not as diverse as I want it to be. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Amina, for sharing yeah. those reflections. And I think it's interesting because you uh, study at uh, Erasmus University in Rotterdam. Yeah. So you already mentioned how diverse the city is and how it's actually not reflected, at least in the teaching staff, I, uh, I understand. Um, and um, um, you mentioned that you had 35 while for this exercise, you can actually get 100, right? So if you would agree with all the statements, you get 100. So you are actually very, have a very low score in that sense. Um, and what was the, the, what were the main points that made you score so low? Can you kind of reflect on all the statements you had to yeah, like disagree with? The statements one, four and six were the ones that were actually zero. And I don't remember exactly what statements it were. Oh yeah, this was, but this was more like the uh, refugee kind of part because my parents came here and they didn't know any anything about Dutch, like Holland and the Dutch system. So me and my brother had to figure it out ourselves. And like um, four and six, I don't remember. Anymore. Yeah, and the teaching staff, like I said, but that's like in my faculty. I don't know how it's with like other studies at Erasmus because Erasmus is very big and I know like other people do have uh, teachers that are like from other countries and um, in the communication materials published. Also that um, if I think about flyers and like the websites and stuff, it's the, um, the basic white person that you see. And of course that's, that's the like the most students that go there are like the white Dutch people but like it would be nice to see a little bit diversity we have like the student groups like they are muslim people and like but they do represent the groups but i don't see that back like at the web on the website or flyers as much as i wanted to so yeah okay thank you amina again for those reflections and i believe um nadia you are also at elsmith university right yes and you actually also had 35 i see so I'm curious to hear if you recognize some of Amina's reflections or if you have other thoughts. Oh, uh, well, yes. Um, I had the identity of a male that um, has no family experience in higher education. And the reason why I chose this identity is because I also had uh, people that had this. So they were speaking um, about their experiences that their families did not have and how this influenced the way that they, um, for example, statement one and two, that they had no uh, nowhere to go because their families could not understand their struggles actually. 
Um, so that was actually statement one was actually something I already heard from a male that has no family experience in higher education. And um, I agree with Amina because I think um, in my case, I do see the diversity in my study um, a lot. But I do believe that when I think about family experience that uh, of students, that a lot of people do not take this into consideration. So that it's mostly about cultural backgrounds and um, how they feel. But I kind of noticed this year, 2021, <laughs> how much this can affect students. So the fact that their families have no experience in higher education and this influence the way that they navigate the university, but also how they can adapt to what is being taught, etc. So that's why I had um, zero for the first two. And also I had for statement three, I had partially because um, I think that um, people can not, relates to those with uh, that maybe from another group. But for example, that if a male that has no family experience in higher ed education finds some someone else that also struggles with this, struggles with navigating the university, then they can relate to this and this will have a positive influence. But uh, that's the reason I had five points there. But the only uh, statement where I had 10 was actually nine. Um, I do not remember, but it was funny because um, I do believe that a lot of students know where they have to go to when they need support, but I just think that they do not use it um, because they don't feel that uh, they can be open enough or that people will understand them. So, yeah. Thank you, Nadia. Very interesting uh, because I think that's a really um, uh, insightful reflection in terms of belonging, right? So you actually know but you don't feel that it actually is helpful for you. So that says something about, you know, um, to what extent you feel that your voice and your experiences matter. So thank you also for those reflections. Um, I also see some higher scores, uh, for instance, from Sean, you have 45. So I'm very curious, Sean, to hear your reflections. And also, I believe you're at Agile, right? <clears throat> Just to make sure, um, uh, to position uh, your context. Yeah, um, sorry, mine was 65, not 45. Oh, I missed the bottom two off. <laughs> okay, so that's um, higher. That's okay. I think it's yeah. actually the highest from everyone. So that's good. I was, the, I, other, uh, <laughs> the other I end. done yeah. mine as a, um, a black male. I, that's the two I changed. I kept the heterosexual and no family experiences in higher education the same because I have done have any family experience in higher education. Um, I think the university as a whole is like really supportive from what, what I can say for um, people of different ethnic backgrounds and we, I do see a lot of ethnicity in, in the university and with my lecturers etc but it might, it might just be what I've come across but I've never had a teacher who's a black male and I don't really see um, people around the campus who are black males and I don't think that's anything to do with the university. I think that's more to do with society and the opportunities that are given to like these individuals and the fight they've got to give to to reach that to reach to get to higher education. Um, that, that, that's my opinion. But I do I, I do the university is um really supports and I just try and represent everybody. And um, my course, I've actually done um um Black Caribbean. Um, we have people coming in to do training on that and like travel community and etc but I don't know whether that's just me because I'm doing teaching so I have to come across all individuals um, but yeah that's why I got that high. <laughs> Thank you Sean and again um, you know uh, all of you have all these different perspectives and you actually related to society right so what happens in society is then reflected within the institution as you mentioned when it comes to representation and I think you know this actually shows uh, why this exercise is called the power walk, because this is related to power structures in society, because this is related to power structures um, in the institution. So thank you, Sean, uh, for that uh, reflection. Um, since, um, we are running out of time, I see, and I want to make sure that we get everyone's contributions. I'm going to ask um, um, uh, James, um, 
um, on your reflections, maybe also respond what you've heard so far. And I see your score was 40. So what are your, um, what was your um, experience during the exercise? Yeah, so I sort of agree with Sean, especially coming from the same university and actually the same course. I think part of it is your actual location and where Sean was sort of saying how perhaps it's not where we don't see perhaps a lot of ethnicity. It's not actually down to the course or anything like that. It might be the location. Um, but I know on certain courses as well that there might be a high percentage so I decided to look at a white female with no higher education um, and the higher education really would then start to impact I'd say the first and second points really because if you've not got not got any experience in higher education then you could go to your parents but then your parents might want to try and support you but they might not be able to support you as well and again, if we go to the second one, thank you. Um, I think, again, that depends on the course as well, because I think even when I looked at it from my own eyes, taking out someone else's eyes, I think looking at a course that you're doing or a university sometimes without with the ancestry, it can be quite hard, really, especially if you never told it or you never look into it. Um, in a huge amount of debt for really. Thank you, James. And um, it's interesting to uh, hear that, you know, you um, uh, reflect also on um, the, the um, different uh, role that you took on because um, uh, Sean um, was uh, taking on the role of black male and you had a white female yet the, um, the academic background was the same, I believe, the first uh, one yes. going yeah. to higher education. So you see how um, there can be a racial or et uh, ethnic dynamic, but if it's uh, connected to, um, you know, a first generation student being the first one having to navigate the university, there are also many similarities uh, that you can share. Um, thank you, James, also for, uh, for that uh, contribution. Um, um, Thank you. I think that was, are there any other volunteers from Edge Hill? Then we can move on to um, other um, perspectives. Um, Farina, can you share uh, your uh, score with us and also um, from which context you're speaking and your role? Sorry, I can. So my score was 45 and I took the role of an Asian female girl who has no family experience in higher education, which uh, to me was very interesting because I come from a family where nearly everyone uh, gets ex or got already experiences in higher education. But even the first, the first um, statement kind of my my uh, made up identity as a, the the Asian uh, girl without any family experience. I, uh, well, I disagreed with that statement, but even in my real identity, I could not agree totally because like my mom, for example, she used to become a teacher, but she's a bit older so she went to university tons years ago <laughs> and uh, yeah I could not really ask her either so even though I have kind of a real personality that is that differs from the Asian personal well from the made-up personality a lot uh, there were some similarities yeah I think that was that was very yeah, uh, I was, I was I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Farina. I, th I, I love that you related to your own identity. You know, you're asked, obviously, to step into someone else's shoes. But it's interesting how you learn about yourself actually going, you know, through this process of stepping into someone else's shoes. And again, taking like an outsider perspective on your own situation. 
so that's also uh, a, a nice uh, a nice reflection. Thank you uh, for that. Considering the time, um, I do want to make sure that uh, Sarah and Alexandra can uh, share. Um, so Alexandra, um, would you mind sharing your role? And I see you had 45 and um, some of the reflections you want to share. Yes, uh, well, uh, I, sh I chose to be a, um, a gay black male with the first in family to enter higher education. Uh, well, the, the first uh, three statements I scored uh, zero. Well, because I can, my parents don't uh, don't know how to to navigate in in the university because they don't uh, they were not ever there. And I think the second is uh, I recognize my. Can you move forward, please? I. Uh, I recognize the story of my ancestors. Well, uh, in the context of my institution, there is a debate uh, about uh, this because Portugal was a, a colonial uh, country and, uh, and uh, there is now the, the awareness of uh, uh, about by, by students that must be uh, that history that the, the, the contributions of uh, of uh, people from the colonial the colonies must be taken into account because we receive uh, uh, students most uh, most students from Brazil and uh, uh, other uh, countries other colonies but um, it, this this uh, this thing is being being uh, uh, brought to to to, to discussion but uh, as uh being a black male i, I don't think that is already there but I, I must say that it was very difficult to step into the shoes of this uh, person because i have to to think in a, to see with these eyes yeah and it's not easy to see with some other eyes and uh, to think of, in a history, to construct an, uh, construct an history different from ours. Yeah, well, thank you, uh, Alexandra. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think it's great that you related to the historical aspect, right, of, of a, a nation like uh, Portugal, where uh, you see actually the impact of colonial history and how even um, descendants, you know, of the colonized have to relate to that curriculum and how it is actually related to knowledge production. So. Thank you also for that perspective. And then last but not least, Sarah, what are your reflections? So I, um, just like Alexandra, I, 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 my role was a, a black, a black male with no family experience in, in higher education. So um, my lowest punctuation was in the first one and the second one and the third one. Um, and again, I think I don't want to be repetitive uh, about what co my colleague has already said, uh, but I, I, I think I have a, uh, the privilege that my, my parents uh, both were in higher education. Uh, so even my expectations were, I, I can say a little align and I knew what I, I was expecting and they could sit with me and talk me down like, and talk to me about the, the problems I went through and all of that, they could relate to me and that made a lot more easier for me. Um, uh, but I have a colleague now uh, that is, is first generation. So her parents never, uh, never went to higher education and she, she really struggled uh, when she entered higher education. So in, I was putting myself in that role and I was thinking a, a little bit of her in that part. Um, and so, yes, I think the, to conclude, um, thinking about what Alexandra was, was telling now, uh, I think that it's really difficult to, to put ourselves in the, another person's shoes, but I think that having this uh, another viewpoint um it doesn't negate ours uh, uh, and 
it, it provides more context and even more framework uh, for our own experience. And I think that's really important. And I think the Power Walk really provides us with that. Great, thank you so much, Sarah. You actually mentioned something uh, that's really important. Um, and that is something that I would like to share as, as my final reflection uh, in facilitating this exercise is that you have to think of your own framework, right? So if you step into someone else's shoes, the first question then becomes, how do I do this? Um, and, and where do I um, uh, uh, take the experiences? Is it people that I know? Is it things that I've read or things that I've seen? So, uh, and then you become aware of maybe even the limited framework that you have in understanding that specific experience. So indeed, I saw some questions um, or comments in, in the chat uh, of the audience where, you know, to what extent do you reinforce stereotypes? This is exactly um, what you become aware of in this particular activity is that maybe you are inclined to think in terms of stereotypes. Um, so what does that mean for you um, to broaden that framework and broaden that horizon and to engage actual people from those communities to ensure that you don't uh, reinforce the uh, stereotype. So in, 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 in many ways, this activity is an, an awareness exercise, you know, and it uh, um, encourages you to really uh, look for uh, those conversations that help you understand these experiences so that the next time maybe you step into uh, someone else's shoes, you feel like it's, it's based on actual experiences that you can, uh, uh, that, that you have learned from. So Considering the time, my apologies for running a little bit late, but I understand from Ivana that uh, I was okay with five minutes um, longer. I'll, I'll wrap this up for now. To those of you who, um, who have been watching, thank you for joining in this exercise and for sharing your, your reflections in the chat. And I'm handing it back to Liz. Thank you. Thank you all so much. So many insights. I think it is really hard, isn't it, to step into someone else's shoes. And I think it was so interesting how you were all drawing on your own experiences. I think it would be great to compare the score that you got personally based on your experience and, and then how you imagine it would be for other people. But we need to move on now.